The lease, in general, you will make more money, but it takes more sacrifice. Uh, it was never meant to be easy. If it was, uh, everybody will be doing it and there will be no company drivers. Hey guys, my name is Kelly, and we're gonna talk about my experiences as a lease operator. I didn't want it to be a company driver for the rest of my life. I don't want to be micromanaged. I want my freedom. When you have your own truck, you're working for yourself. If you fail, it's because you fail. If you succeed, it's because you succeeded. The company can only give you so much tools to work with, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's how you manage your truck. If, uh, if you abuse your equipment, uh, if you idle too much, you, you know, you're gonna have more expenses. If you, you know, take care of your equipment, if you maintain it, which I do. Alex uh, did a complete brake job, put eight drive tires, brand new. Uh, he put uh, shocks. Uh, he replaced the tensioner, he replaced the belt. So those things I, I have to buy. And because I have to buy those things, it costs money, nothing is free. So things like that will put you a little bit behind your check. But the point I'm making is that you gotta maintain what you have. And being a business owner, it, it tests you how you maintain your equipment and how you take care of it. Because if you abuse it, Eventually, you know, a truck is like a woman. It's gonna leave you on the side of the road. On the business standpoint, I wanted to have my own business. I didn't want it to work for others for the rest of my life. Uh, but it comes with a price. If you take too much time off, you still got payments to take. You have a lot of deductions. <clears throat> it's like anything else. Fuel, escrow account, payments, and so on and so on. And getting a new truck is expensive. You're looking at about 4,000 a month payment so basically what most people start in my, you know, in my kind of situation is they get a kind of kind of a used truck not too old but not too brand new and you know three three and a half years uh, the truck is paid off is yours however because the truck is not new there are things that you gotta fix and replace and there are some weeks where you're gonna make double and triple more than a company driver and there, there are some weeks where you're gonna be making 121 bucks like I did last week. I made 121 last week because that was for the month of February and February was probably the hardest month. Uh, I did maybe 5,800 miles for the whole month or 5,900 and I took all 14 days off. So the thing about, you know, in order for you to stay afloat or to make a profit, you're gonna have to, you know, drive miles because that's what you do, you get paid by the mile. And the less miles you make, the less money you make because you still have expenses coming out. So just because you make less miles and you burn less fuel doesn't mean that, you know, the payments on the truck won't be taken out and, you know, etc., etc. So that's why uh, pretty much I, um, I worked little. I took a lot of time off and after all my expenses and everything, this is what I brought home. So not everybody is fit to be a lease operator. You have to be very determined. You have to stick to a plan. Um, you have to be strong mentally because there will be some really bad weeks and there will be some really good weeks. Uh, you have to be someone who actually believes in what you want to do. And you have to look at the long-term goal, not the short-term. The short-term goal, you, you know, if you look at it, you'll never make it. The long-term is, you know, where am I going to be in three, three and a half years? Along the way, you're going to have some bumps, you're going to have, you know, ups, ups and downs, but as long as you stick to the plan, you know, I'll be able to come out of it. And that's the whole thing is discipline. You have to believe in what you're doing and stick to the plan. You, just because you made $10,000, you know, last two weeks doesn't mean you have to blow it and, you know, buy a 75 inch 4K TV when you can just put the money on the side. You got to be smart. You gotta be respectful and you gotta be smart and you gotta think ahead, you know, and you gotta have a plan, you gotta stick with it. And that's the whole thing is have a backup plan to everything. Anything can happen. You know, you can blow up an engine, you know, the transmission can die out, you can break an axle. But if you go in with your eyes open, then when something happens, then you're not surprised. But if you go in with, with, with the illusion that nothing will go wrong, then that's where you're gonna fail because then you expect that all the time and when things fail, it costs a lot of money. And when they cost a lot of money, if you don't have it, company will take it out of your payroll so they can cover the expenses because you're basically borrowing money from them. And guess what? You're stuck with a $121 check. But if you go in with the mindset that this is what's gonna happen and there's a possibility that your work happen, 
then you don't have to stress out because you already know that that's what you're expecting and that's what happened to me. I'm gonna leave you guys with some tips. Pretty much uh, tip number one, which is the most important, and that should be engraved in everybody's mind, money. Uh, watch your spendings. Um, you know, few, you know, you're limited because you know, you, you, you only want truck, even though as long as you follow the fuel network, you will get some savings, but you limit it. Again, you only have one truck, but if things don't need to be fixed right away, you know, put it off. If things have to be fixed right away, then fix it. Because if you don't fix it right away, things that need to be fixed, your repair is gonna be a lot higher. For example, tires. Push them as long as you can until the legal limit. And then when the legal limit is at on the edge, then replace them. Don't replace them too early and don't replace them too late because then you get put into a scale house, you know, you're out of the limit on the threat depth and then suddenly they shut you down on the scale and then you gotta, you know, it's gonna cost you more money to get those tires repaired. So, you know, oil changes, there's a difference between US and Canada, right? In the US is US dollars, Canadian, Canadian dollars. Over there's more expensive. You're getting paid in Canadian dollars, you're spending in US dollars. So you gotta kind of watch what needs to be fixed, what you need to buy. And, but anyway, money is the number one thing, food. Um, you know, if you have a refrigerator, stock your refrigerator, like that's what I do. You know, I buy my groceries and uh, if I see a Walmart, I put into it and I, I, you know, I try to buy food for two weeks. Avoid wasting your money on tickets. You know, you don't need to be speeding because if you know if you speed, you get caught, you get a citation, right? Uh, same thing on overweight citations. I actually had an overweight citation in Oregon um, last week. I didn't adjust my weight. They could have given me a warning ticket, but they didn't. So don't always expect just because you know the officer is nice, they may let you go. And my ticket was 300 bucks US. So the point I'm making is be smart with your money. Try to do everything legal the best you can because at the end of the day, you're responsible for everything and you're the one who has to pay for everything, you know? So try to not waste money as much as you can. If you're gonna go into this lease operator thing, you have to be mentally prepared that there's a possibility you may fail. And if you do fail, try to bounce back. There's always a solution. There's always an option to everything, you know? but there's a possibility that if you do fail, life is not over. You know, it may take a month to two months to get back on your feet. There will be some dark days, but like I said, at the end of the day, you know, if you do your part and take care of your truck and, you know, run the miles. If you don't run the miles, you're not gonna make the money. And just balance. Balance, uh, if you get burned out and you get stressed out, go home. Take like, you know, a week off, that's what I do. Go home, take a week off, decompress, uh, get your mind together and get back on the road. And, but you have to have a strong mind. You have, to have an, you have to have an attitude that you will make it, you will succeed. If you don't, there's no point even to get into it. So the last tip that I'm gonna give you is probably, if not the most important tip. So when you work for a company, you wanna develop a good relationship, especially if you're an operator or a lease driver. And the reason is this, I had to get eight new tires, drive tires on my truck. They were getting pretty low and you can't just replace four, you have to replace the whole axle. So Jay, which guy is amazing, I love him to death, um, he helped me out. Uh, he actually gave me eight tires with a discount. So pretty much I paid eight recaps, Michelin top of the line recaps for like a thousand dollars, which is, you're not gonna find that everywhere. And the point I'm making is that when you have a, when you develop a relationship with people that you work with, this is how you get rewarded by them giving, helping you or giving you a lending hand. You know, you still got to pay for that. Nothing is free, but if they're willing to help you to get where you need to be, then that's how you become successful. And a lot of guys, they decide to kind of like be arrogant you know it's like i have my own business i don't have to do this i don't have to do that well the, you don't want to get far and one day when you need them they don't have to do nothing for you you got to use diplomacy you got to be diplomatic you can you can be rough with people and same thing with dispatch i, I asked i have a really really good relationship with lizzie she's amazing and 
I said to Lizzie, you know, listen, I, uh, I, took, I took off seven days. I need to get some really good miles. Can you help me out? And um, she sends me a message and she says, you're going to Edmonton. And that's 2,100 miles, you know, for three, three and a half days. So if you have the right attitude and you're willing to work with people, sometimes you have to do favors and favors are returned, you know, the same way. And if you don't, you know, show up your horns and you, know, you think you're better and all that stuff, then they're willing to work with you and they'll give you the tools for you to succeed. And that's the whole point. A lot of companies are not like that. You know, so you have to have people skills, you have to have patience, and sometimes they're, you know, bad trips, short miles, and sometimes there's really good trips, really good miles. So, but the point I'm making is that you have to learn how to get along with people, and you have to learn that, you know, you just want truck, and if you want their support and the help, you're going to have to learn not to kiss ass but simply be respectful and, and work with them and ask for help and say, hey, this is, this is my situation. Is there anything you can do for me? And Jay did it for me. You know, $1,000 for eight tires, I'm sorry, but that's, that's pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. You're not gonna find that at a Love's truck stop. Tires like that, you're looking at easily $4,000, maybe less, maybe more. But the point is, you know, work with the people you work with you know, show them respect, you know, show them kindness. So leasing a truck, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. It's pretty much uh, trial and error, you know, and, and also how much money you're willing to spend and how much money you're willing to risk. If I was to go through a bank, the down payment, well, I, I don't know, what is it, 10, 15%. So on a brand new truck, the payments you're looking at $4,000. Uh, with ET, I think it was $2,700 based on the truck that I got. So you can, you can get an old, old truck that you can pay off in a year, but you're taking a lot of risk because the truck is gonna have a lot of miles and then you can pay it off and you just hope it doesn't break and maybe you can save money really fast. A new truck, you're not gonna have any problems. Everything is under warranty. The thing is $4,000 and everybody wants to pay $4,000. That's more than a mortgage. Uh, so what people do is go in the middle. The problem with that is when you go in the middle, you know, you still have three years of that. So by the time you pay it off, the warranty is already out. So that means then you gotta start saving money for the repairs in case something bad happens. And usually around 700,000 miles, that's when you're gonna have problems with EGR, you're gonna have problems, uh, you know, turbos and stuff like that, injectors. But the point I'm making is that it, if you're lucky enough to drive the truck before you actually lease it, then you're in a good spot because that's what happened to me. I drove it as a company truck, uh, the cylinder broke, uh, it was under warranty, they pretty much did a complete overhead uh, on the engine and I don't have any problems. So I looked out on that part and that's why I'm persistent of making it because it doesn't mean that if I get another truck that it's going to be all rosy and sunny. It may, it may even be worse. So with this truck, after they did the repairs, I drove it, I never had any problems. So I looked at on that part. But it, it's hard to say because everybody has a different financial situations and goals and limitations. It just depends how much money you got. And and uh, even even if you get a, a brand new truck, even brand new trucks, because I had a brand new Kenwood W9 20 years ago and the injectors went out the first week. The power steering gearbox went out. They had to get a new power steering gear. So new trucks will break just as old trucks. You don't know, you can't predict it. You know, they come out of the assembly line like cookies. And you know, you may get a bad one, you may get a good one. Some people never had any problems with their trucks. Some people have problems every year. It just, it's a gamble. But now we're gonna talk about trailers. So trailers, uh, that's where your money is. A lot of people think, you know, new guys that get into it, that if they buy a truck, the truck is going to make you money. The truck is not making you money. The trailer is making you money because you're holding the product in a trailer. So if you want to make money, a little extra money, then you have to have a trailer. The problem with that is you have to understand, you know, they got different types of trailers. You have to understand the industry. You have to understand how the freight works and, you know, reefers. Uh, there's, there's work, but it's also seasonal, right? Depending what you want to haul. Um, flatbed, uh, you make more money, but you don't get those miles. So 
you have to understand how the industry works and you have to kind of know what, where you, where you want to go into and based on that, what you want to do. You know, you can't just get any trailer, right? You have to be in an area that you're going to be working with. If you're going to be working with a reefer, that means you got to pick up frozen stuff and you have to understand how the market works. You have to understand, you know, seasonal work. You know, in the winter, there may not be as much strawberries as it is in the summertime. So that fluctuates the, uh, the freight. Uh, when it comes to dry vans or vans, uh, you can pretty haul everything, but some of those rates are low, right? Because, it's, uh, you know, just the way the industry works. Uh, flatbed, low boys, they make a little more money because you're dealing, you know, but they get they pay more but the mileage is less so you don't get those mileage like you do in a reef or division or you get in a, a van the industry fluctuates money fluctuates and the best way to do it is uh if you know just lease to a company and, and work with a company they may not pay you a lot of money but work is guaranteed if you go independent you're on your own uh, then you're dealing with brokers and brokers sometimes don't pay you on time so it, it's you really have to understand what you're getting into because you're taking a lot of risk. There's more stress on the lease operator side. Uh, you have more mental stress, you have more financial stress, and that can offset your course of what you want to do. On the company side, you're safe. You know, you don't have to pay for anything. You know, you go home, you know, you know your paycheck. On the lease, you're taking a lot of risk. So I think on the lease, you you have more mental stress and you have to learn how to deal with it. You have to learn how to, uh, when you go home, decompress. Uh, and when you're on the road, you gotta be smart. For me, I do well in a stressful environment. I, I, I perform better when I'm under pressure. A lot of guys don't. A lot of guys wanna have a safety net. You know, I'm, I'm the opposite. So in the short term, you lose a lot more in the lease but in the long term you gain a lot more and that's the difference a company driver you're not going to gain nothing maybe five or ten cents in five years maybe a bonus you know for not having any accidents but you're still going to be a company driver and you're still going to be exactly where you are in the next 20 or 30 years and some guys are very comfortable with that and i guess i was a, a risk taker from the beginning since you know when I got into the industry, so that's just my personality. I know for myself, I can make it, um, and I will. Uh, I've done it before, I have failed in the, in the past, but the only thing uh, failure does is makes me wanna get up and, and do it again and, and make it happen and make it work. So everybody is different. Everything is different for everybody. You know, it's difficult because some people believe in it and they give up. And they back to square one. I, uh, I guess I'm stubborn, and I, uh, I really believe in what I want to do and what I want to accomplish, and that puts me on the edge to where I push myself to the limit, and I'll make it happen. It may take me a little, little longer, but I'll get what I want to be, and I'll, and I'll get what I want at the end. I always do. Thanks for uh, watching, everybody, and if you have any questions and comments, feel free uh, to write it down.